You've asked me this before, dude. I am tired of talking to you. But for for five, James, because I like you, I'll give you a title shot. <laughs> a rug. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of EIF Superstardom. Tonight, it is Superstardom 331, and yes, you are hearing the voice of the one, the only EIF owner, Carney, as always, back at you. Yes, I was supposed to be taking a little bit of a break, and I will be returning to that sabbatical, not CM Punk style. I am coming back afterwards, but I'm going to be returning for that. However, DZ is going to be out of commission tonight, and for that reason, I will retake the duties as lead broadcaster and, of course, the host for Superstardom starting because the road to vengeance continues in the wake of the wrestlemania demolition derby that was eif wrestlemania 10 continuous seeds begin to be planted in the rivalries heading forward to our upcoming vengeance pay-per-view live friday april the 14th and yes you did hear me correctly friday april the 14th 9 p.m eastern start time that is next week friday night do not miss it the 11th annual vengeance the original eif pay-per-view event that was the first ever eif pay-per-view held in May of 2007. Tonight, though, we have a number of matches planned to be happen. I joke about that because I actually did not plan any of the matches tonight. But as I look in the party, let's try and find one. How about Untamed Legend kicking things off? Untamed Legend against... Actually, is Isaac here? Yeah, sure. All right, we'll do that. I, I did want to do... All right. Who? Okay, Greedy, you're watching this? Oh, ASP, you're watching? Okay. Uh, Greedy technically can override... Hold on. Okay, hold on, jump. Greedy can technically override you, ASP, because he's the reason why I'm here tonight, in part. So, Greedy and Nexus can both do it. So, all right. Greedy, go ahead and join in. All right, sounds good, man. What announcement. Oh, my God, I guess. All right. Yeah, yeah. So. Right. So, Isaac and Untamed, last time I checked, didn't you guys fight on, like, an ED and Isaac beat you? All right, anyway. Also want to let everybody know uh, in advance, ED is this Saturday. We did have an ED earlier this week. From what I understood, there was an issue with the free play days. So Xbox, thanks for trying to expose a group of people to a new game. And WWE, thank you for showing a group of those people that they will never buy this new game because of your server issues. So that was really smart business. Uh but we do, yes, we do have a new Intercontinental Champion. Pepsi Killer is the new IC Champion, so congrats to him. He has the league uh, record, I believe, for most IC Championships. His Untamed Legend is still yet to join the game, but... Also, we're going to see in action later on tonight superstars such as NBC Master, Greedy, and that's right, the new Superstar Champion Nexus Genesis for the first time since winning the championship last week. Nexus Genesis will be in action tonight, the second time as Superstar Champion, and for the second time beat NBC in a no submission one on one. The tough part for NBC Master is he does not get the immediate rematch to Nexus like he did last time. That right has been reserved for Greedy, who will pick the stipulation for his matchup with Nexus Genesis. Those two collide one-on-one -on -one at Vengeance next Friday and what is planned to be our main event. Still unsure about the World Championship. Obviously, ED has uh, its debacles that we unfortunately are seeing just so much of. But uh, trying to... Trying to reprimand those issues and hopefully have a world championship match on the ED side of things as well come vengeance. Don't forget, it is April, which means we are officially in BFG season. The first episode of Superstar would take place in the fourth month of the calendar year. Won't see any Superstar in BFG, or at least it's not planned that we will, but of course, matches can mean something. This is Untamed's first match since losing the Intercontinental Championship to Pepsi Killer. Oh, 
But he's got to look to bounce back in his matchup with Master B. Master B, on the other hand, an ED superstar, as is Untamed. So it's two ED guys locking up here on Superstardom. But guys that have roots in Superstardom, they've competed for the championship on here at least once. In Master B's case, a couple of occasions. That's important for both these guys moving forward. Untamed Legend uh, routed from the Intercontinental Championship, but maybe he has more left in him. Here we go, guys. Ding, ding, ding. As I was saying, you have to wonder, if maybe Untamed Legend has something in him, possibly uh, may maybe main event theories or maybe main event pursuits. We know that Master B is trying to do that on ED, which is sort of a cluster right now. Again, Extreme Distortion uh, still much to be desired. New champion Hostile Exile has ran into some scheduling errors, but we're trying to correct them, and he'll have a match where he's set to defend his title this Saturday evening. DZ will be in charge of that show. Make sure you're keeping tabs on EIF by following us along on Twitter using at EIF Network. For the latest up-to-date information, you will know that this show was scheduled to a different time and that I am here as Untamed clotheslines Isaac out of the ring. Untamed Legend, not in a good mood tonight. He lost the IC title. He's very happy to have been Intercontinental Champion for over a month as Master Beast sliding in and ducking under the clothesline. And there's the crossbody, vintage, I thick. And much like Isaac, Untamed Legend, also with guaranteed draft picks, and they are two new characters. And you know what? This is a bit of a rivalry that's brewing here because Untamed Legend cannot be happy about the idea that Master B took his character because B will represent John Cena in the second half of EIF 2K17 here on WWE 2K17. Actually, coming up next month, official date is yet to be confirmed, but we can tell you that May will be the Superstorm draft. It annually takes place, usually in May, so this kind of works out. So running Luthez connecting for Untamed Legend, who's dialed in there. But that will soon be Master B. Untamed, on the other hand, took Randy Orton. And don't forget, you, you too can still pick a character by having the ability to gain a WWE 2K17 second round draft pick in Superstardom. If you don't have one already, you probably already know that. For more information, please contact me. Next person to pick is Hybrid Maniac, although we haven't heard anything from him yet. And then a guy named Romans, who I'm not really sure is in EIF anymore, but hey, Nexus tried to give him a pick. So. Oh yeah, you do, you do. Um, I just haven't added it in yet. I have to, I have to remember to go back and do that. Oh yeah, I'm sure you do that, James. Couple of stomps on the outside here. I, I, Jumper, you are one of the only people that constantly tries to batter me about it. Dude, you can trust me. I know, I just have to check. 30 cents more, if it would have been 30, I would have been more happy, but that's okay, I am I understand. So, right, running Bulldog connecting for Master B. Healthier Superstar, though, is Untamed Legend. We mentioned these two did fight on ED not too long ago. The victor was Master B, his older brother, former multi-time Superstorm champion NBC, also expected to be in action tonight. I will give you a warning there, Master B. We do give warnings to some of our Superstars that are known for better reputations. Master B is one of them. His brother is not. And a sit-out scoop slam. Oh, he's breaking kayfabe using his first name. Yeah, exactly. That's not our business. We're not in the sports entertainment business. We're in the sports business. RK no reversal. Right hand to the abdomen. Master B just trying to keep close quarter combat here with those strikes. He's able to get back and take the advantage in health. I think just by a sliver, he's now beaten out from Untamed Legend, but a good rally 
from Master B to close that health barrier. One reversal apiece. And then somebody playing stuff in the background to make commentary hard for me. That was really nice of you. Shows you. So somebody's happy to have me here. Follow James on Snapchat at JamesRKOFL for his latest YouTube videos. They're striving in views. He's getting, he's averaging three views a week. Hey, can somebody watch the party for like several minutes so we know who's doing that? So that way I know who to kick when I'm done with this match. Left hand connecting for Untamed. Now, now they both reverse Untamed out of reversals and he's going to skedaddle. Both superstars with the finisher in hand. Both trying to play a patient game here. Untamed Legend on the outside. Yet again, grabbing the steel steps. A match that features disqualification. Yet, he continues to persist. What's up, Roman? There's that second set of steps. And Untamed Legend just... Trying to play this game, and this is this is vintage Untamed Legend here, but vintage Untamed Legend is, is the side of Untamed that even he should want to get away from. Really doesn't do him a whole lot. Official now going to grab the steps as they change color. Did you notice that? Uh, there's a running bulldog <laughs> from Master B. We have all sorts of tricks here in EIF, and they are not only for kids. Get it? Haha, -ha, serial reference. Running clothesline, stopped with a spine buster. Rolling to the outside once again is Untamed Legend. That's your second or third ring skate. So Master B looking to get back-to-back -back wins over Untamed and back-to-back -back weeks and down goes Untamed Legend. Hey Untamed, did you confirm with DZ or Pepsi that you're using the rematch at Vengeance? Okay, well, that was pretty dumb of you, don't you think? Okay, so they have no idea, essentially. Okay, well, I'll have to text Pepsi. Is the website updated that shows he's champion? Like, is he listed? Yeah, I told you, the steps change colors. All right, let me text him. I'll be honest with you, man. I have no idea what's going on with the IF. I just came here to run tonight's show, and Helocity is not my project. Helocity is like an extension of EIF. It's, um, so I'm not really sure. Oh, somebody invite Pepsi in here. And the knee trembler connects. I was going to text him, but it would just be easier to invite him. Hooks the leg. One, two, and untamed legend able to get out of it. Anyway, just, yeah, somebody please make sure you invite, uh, what's his name? Why does he have to defend tonight? Okay, well, is, was he scheduled to defend? And what did he say? When are they, when's Hellosity? Hey, Pepsi. How many times have you won the IC title? Okay. Um, Untamed is using his rematch clause at Vengeance next Friday, okay? All right. I just want to make sure that you were aware of that. Okay, yeah. Nine to midnight. Um, and uh, if you... If you want a match tonight, I can get you that. I just wasn't sure. I wanted to make sure you knew about this because I'm... Just been told this. What's up? Who will defend next week? Well then, okay, well Ralik and them need to make sure they have that under either 
Okay, they just need to make sure they're getting stuff done because Helocity cannot have a champion defend once a month. I'll make one exception because honestly, I don't think anybody's counting records for the Helocity title reigns. But. Yeah, but you're. No. Okay, well, that's obviously Pepsi's answer as to whether he wants to do a match or not. Works for me. Elbow drop connects. Yeah, I don't work here. Yeah, if hybrid wins, we'd probably do that. There's always a chance hybrid won't make it and you guys will replace him. Saturday. Match slowing up quite a bit here. Both these guys do have finishers, but it's a matter of who will blink, who will react. They don't want none. You can't see me while well, Master B certainly couldn't because he did not see this signature coming. Fun knuckle shuffle connects. Sorry, I'm trying to write out the match card for vengeance so I know what I want to do. To plan around whether I am or am not having a world title match and that is an extreme inconvenience I must say. He doesn't even wear those shoes in real life. Naomi. That's probably true. So that way they glow. <laughs> now, on the apron. Master B coming back in untamed, distracted by the official. He takes advantage, float over DDT, and Untamed misses a big mid-move, and now he is in the denial stage. First step to rehabilitation. Both men with four reversals. Snapmare connecting for Master B. <laughs> Master B drowning in his own sludge right now as he tries to get through this match. Right hand stopped with the left. Untamed Legend. Running and it's a battle. Cross bodies versus Luthez when it comes to the running game between John Cena and Dean Ambrose. Untamed Legend and Master B. A big win for either of these two, not only just in the form of moving forward for story progression in EIF, but also in the case of getting some well earned points in those BFG standings. People are taking a more attentive and regular look at them on the website. You can check it out at leaguelineup.com slash EIF lives as Master B looking to put a bullet and a knee through the head of Untamed Legend. And they both exchange finisher reversals. Again, the, the road to the Sweet 16 EIF's sixth annual Battle for Glory All-Stars tournament continues. And we are down to just a few weeks before the BFG begins. BFG will officially be underway Saturday, April 29th. That is the beginning of the preliminary round, the opening round of the Battle for Glory All-Stars Tournament. So we are almost down to just, well, just about three and a half weeks separate us from now in the beginning of the BFG. A lot of guys know what the tournament is. A lot of people excited. Can have a few people competing in their first ever BFG. The rookies tend not to fare too well in that tournament, but anything can change. It's a new year. New year, new me. Write everybody with Facebook posts on January 1st. And now an elbow to the top of the head. Untamed Legend just being smacked down like a rag doll. Don't forget this opening match and the rest of Superstar. And brought to you by Life, starring Ryan Reynolds and further cast more Life in theaters now. I only am suggesting that because I just saw it last night. Pretty sure it's towards the end of its theatrical run, but it was a damn good movie. So, anyway, better than anything I've seen in wrestling. Uh, life. That was pretty good. I'd give it like a seven and a half. 
Yeah, it actually was. I didn't think it was going to be that scary, but it was pretty damn scary. So. The running Bulldog. Oh, uh, yeah, there are a few of those. Yeah, I have. I didn't think that was very scary. I didn't think that was very scary, but... I liked the idea behind it. I wish I wish the girl's family would have won. No, we're not, but we're going to call this. Oh, no, I'm tamed with a reversal, and that is sad. That is not, though. That is a small package chance to win the match for Master B. Here, two count, and Untamed powers out of it. Untamed being brought back to his feet, but Master B trying to mute the offensive attempt. A few slaps, another few slaps from one end of the ring to the other a drop kick into the sternum. As these two have been going for a decent length of a match right now, that is Untamed's final ring escape. Might have been his fifth, but I count, I forgot to count. Former IC champion in search of answers here tonight. Untamed knows how important that IC title was in terms of getting him into the Sweet 16 for the BFG. And he knows now he has a chance that he could slip out of favor. By the way, Untamed, uh, have you competed in the BFG before? No? Damn. He's trying to get in his first one. Is Pepsi in the 16? Wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> needed a face. Connecting Master B now, looking for the scoop slam. He has stopped in his tracks. Close line missing. Float over, mid move, mid move, and Untamed can't capitalize. Untamed again with a big mid move, but it is not big enough for him to hit that giant RT button. Oh, and Untamed is trying to disconnect now in fear for his chances to win. And the match continues though. Although the face missing. And out goes Untamed. Untamed just continuing to play this waiting game and it, it's taking up time in the matchup but uh, you know, Untamed trying to be strategic here. It's only a one nothing finisher count, I believe. Master B has hit one. Knee trembler. No, he hasn't. Untamed reversed the second and third one. Yeah, you're an idiot. We hate you. Untamed nearly gaining the legs of Master B. Oh, that would have been huge for Untamed. And look at Master B just toying with him. Look how close he is. Too close for comfort, perhaps. Untamed asked for this match, though. He asked for Master B, and that's who he's getting. Oh! Oh, Master B. Able to avoid Untamed. Count at eight. Nine. Oh, Untamed got in. And oh, he nearly got the offense, but he went for that long clothesline. And laughter everywhere, and spit all over the TV from Lithby Ivic. Untamed Legend, reversed. <laughs> yeah, you can't make fun of him, you new guy. Untamed Legend, out of tune, adjustment connects. And he might be sending Bryce face out of here, but a rope break. Oh, that is terrible. A 1-1 one, one finisher count, and you can tell the wrestling gods, a.k.a. JBL, not on the side of Untamed Legend. Oh, that is disappointing for Untamed. Foot under the bottom rope. And here goes another AA. He goes to be bold, but he's not bold enough. Oh, wait a minute. Untamed using another reversal. Both men out of reversals now. And Untamed could make it a 2-1 finisher count. Remember, stolen completely legal here, but he's got to gain that stamina back in time. And I don't know if he's going to be able to. Master B rapidly closing in on that next finisher, and Untamed fails to capitalize. 
He went for it instead though, like a total fucking idiot. And he gets reversed. Dirty Deeds connects. 2-1 finisher count. Everybody else did. One, two, and Untamed gets pinned. Master B <laughs> pulling out the W here. Untamed, get out of the party for saying it's not more important. I thought you were. All right. Up next, it's Greedy versus Jumper. Or we could do Greedy versus Jumper versus Headshot. All right, I have to respect Greedy's wishes. Sorry, Redneck. He is, he is not lying about that. Un hey, man, Headshot, I can always hook up, hook you up with a good match if uh, you know how to get to me. My, you know, they say, they say chocolates are the way to a woman's heart. Well, money is a way to my, uh, to mine. So. What's up? Uh, I mean, I never do anything with the BFG, so I have no idea. No, it's that way. It's not going to be the same stipulation. No, this is going to be a normal match. Why would we do that? That would be such a dumb spoiler. Um, is Nexus supposed to fight anybody else tonight? Okay, no. Um, hold on. All right. Wait, Nexus wasn't supposed to fight anybody tonight, was he? Oh, actually, Nexus, do you have a preference on who you fight? Oh, uh, well, Greedy wants to fight Jumper. Just let Greedy and Jumper fight. Here, this match is up. Who's watching this, Nexus? Oh, ASP. All right. All right, ASP, you're watching. It's uh, Nexi, or no, not Nexi, uh, Greedy and uh, Jumper. Um, I mean, Nexus, do you have a preference of who you fight? Uh, I mean, do you want to go on last? I mean, ASP says he wants to fight you. Do you want to go on last against him? All right, then we'll do that. So it's a grudge match. And also coming up next, following this matchup, it's a no submission match between NBC Master and Tripod. That's coming up next here on Superstardom. Then following that, it's a big giant multi-man before the main event because that'll probably take an hour. All right, we're waiting on Jumper.
So a matchup that in real life has been seen. The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels have been known to put on phenomenal matches tonight. Greedy and Jumper will get that treatment or that opportunity. Of course, Jumper having some guarantees in the future. Greedy as well. And now Greedy has the opportunity following this matchup. He will get to pick the stipulation between he and Nexus Genesis. So by the time NBC gets to use his rematch, it could be against a person he didn't even lose his title to. Here we go. Ding, ding, ding. Greedy and Jumper underway. The United States champion Jumper Magnum next week will defend once more against Headshot Killa. Headshot, sometimes you pave the way, other times you pay the way. And Headshot did the latter of those two as he'll go one-on-one -on -one with Jumper for the United States championship at EIF Vengeance. Greedy will be in the main event with Nexus Genesis. So both those matches, one-on-ones and Jumper trying to get to a speedy start here using the speed of Shawn Michaels, but the Undertaker reverse. And of course you, in uh, my first broadcast for EIF since WrestleMania, I will say the hashtag thank you Taker, uh, truly living up to it. Of course, Undertaker having a, a phenomenal career. Some people think that, uh, you know, sh <laughs> shouldn't, have, uh, shouldn't have went out the way he did, but a lot of times the old school way is to go out on your shield and that's what happened. And he ultimately lost to somebody who was in the shield. So a little bit of wordsmithing but uh, obviously Undertaker meaning a lot to certain people. Greedy, uh, definitely one of those guys. He's been the mainstay as the Undertaker for so long, and he will be the Undertaker for the remainder of 2K17, barring any trades with the first overall pick in the 2K second, uh, 2K17 second round draft. Greedy getting to represent the wrestler that got him into wrestling. And you think about that as an inspiration. You look back at your career, a Hall of Fame resume, multi-time world champion on both brands. It's a lot to be happy about. And Greedy hoping to add another world championship reign. <laughs> it's been uh, a long time overdue. Greedy, in fact, this May, uh, actually it might even be April. I'd have to double check, but uh, would mark one year since Greedy was last a world champion in EIF. So it's a dry spell he's looking to rid himself of while his opponent tonight, Jumper Magnum, still looking for that. Very difficult first world championship reign, but he is looking very good in this one-on-one -on -one with Greedy. He has an elbow to the face and now working on that arm once again. Jumper, a multi-time United States champion. He's been very happy with that, been very successful in the mid-card of EIF. Had one crack at the world championship last June at Collision Course, a pay-per-view notorious for people who have not won the world championship. Since a sharpshooter is locked in center of the ring, immediately let go of, but a finisher now obtained for that United States champion, Jumper Magnum, who, let's not forget, at EIF WrestleMania 10 just a few weeks back, was in a triple threat with Greedy and able to slay him and one other unnamed opponent to retain his championship. Left hand connecting. Name redacted, if you didn't get it. And Greedy now struck with a left forearm to the face. Jumper out of reversal, still able to hit that running cross elbow though. And even though he's out of reversals, health is certainly in favor of Jumper V Magnum, who Greedy challenged in a one-on-one -on -one battle tonight. Jumper using that ground game to his advantage has not done a tremendous amount of damage to pay attention, not to the red HUD bar, but to the uh, dark body image. You can see Greedy only showing damage to the arms. But now the torso, this Jumper's trying to put some more work in on Greedy before possibly attempting a finishing maneuver. We mentioned Jumper yet to have won a world championship in EIF, a primary superstardom guy. Will be interesting to see because if you look at the BFG standings on our EIF website, Jumper is actually placed quite high there uh, based on the points he has occurred and accumulated here on Superstar. It'll be an interesting fit to see if Jumper does end up making the Sweet 16 or not. Now again, nothing has been confirmed as to whether the statistics you see on the website are the true representation that will be used when naming the BFG's 16 seeds. If they are though, and I think even if they aren't, it might be safe to say Jumper's made a very good case for himself to at least be somewhere in the Battle for Glory All-Stars standings. But it'll be interesting to see how as an ED superstar he competes. Both men with finishers and now Greedy beginning to strike back. Undertaker, one of the best strikers in the game. And Greedy going vintage Taker with that big boot. Off with your head goes Jumper. And Greedy 
signaling the end. And it's completely legal. Jumper did not have a reversal. Tombstone pile driver. Hooks the leg. One, two. And Greedy off of one finisher. Rest in peace and Greedy comes back. A rally from behind victory to win here tonight. Well, the question that everybody is wondering now is what is the stipulation? What will Greedy challenge Nexus Genesis for his Superstorm Championship in? Come vengeance. And a Falls Count Anywhere match it is. So there will be no limits separating Greedy from Nexus Genesis. We saw Nexus and NBC play a lot of the ring in, ring out game. Well, that will not matter come Friday the 14th. Greedy will also, unlike NBC Master, have submission on his side as he will look to end the reign of Nexus and begin the reign of the dead man. Coming up next, speaking of NBC, the former Superstarm champion in action on Superstardom for the first time since losing his title. James calls watching, I believe, and it will be NBC. Oh, Nexus already called it. My bad. Nexus called it. So it will be NBC Master in a no submission matchup with Prismatic Nebula. Tripod still trying to prove he's got some main eventer left in him. Let's find out if that's true or false. The match is up. Oh. <laughs> Yes, he did. Oh, by the way, uh, Untamed, make sure you let me know whatever the stipulation you're using for Pep says. Oh, what the hell? I thought I changed the arena. Why are people... No, people aren't going to be cashing in. It's, uh, it's going to be booked at Vengeance. Okay, my apologies for the wrong arena. Uh, Capital Punishment will be the arena used for victory votes, though. Look at this. Isn't it perfect for it? Oh, uh, yeah, Extreme Rules. Wow, they even have the WWE HD thing. Uh, well, uh, for Vengeance, yeah, but this is the arena we're using for uh, Victory Votes. I heard Extreme Rules. All right, I'm pretty confident I'm not going to get any more funds today, so I'm pretty sure I'm just going to deposit. I know, right? Well, I think your brother, it's not too late. Do you guys need some shots? I think you do. Give me a second. I forgot you were Dolph. All right. Ready and ding, ding, ding. 
And here we go, it is a no submission matchup. Tripod trying to prove he is a main eventer. The first time these two encountered each other in a big match, it was the BFG last year. NBC, despite being the lower of the two seeds in that opener round, probably went in as the favorite, but Tripod able to use the experience edge on his side. In fact, Tripod has been to every Battle for Glory All-Stars tournament. Very few people can say that, in fact, I want to say he's one of only three, two or three superstars to have done so. Uh, well, if you look at it, Hostile Exile, Ratluck, I think, has been a part of every one of them. I'm not 100% sure, though. Ratluck actually may not have been a part of the first one. I don't know if Ratluck was a part of the first one back in 2012. Um, Tripod, DZ, Hostile. Of course, DZ is unlikely to be able to make the 16 right now. It would be an improbable run that DZ would have to go on mathematically to, based on his statistics, get in. Uh, Hostile Exile, obviously, it's very confident that he will return not only uh, a high spot, but also Hostile going in as the world champion, it looks like. I forget, what seed was Hostile last year? Was he three last year? Or... Pretty sure he was. Hostile was three last year. And then what? He fought Aaron, and Aaron was like nine, right? That was the finals, I think. Yeah, so the. So the winning seeds have been one, three, and seven. Those are the three magic numbers in the five BFG tournaments, if you have one of those numbers. Or did, I'm trying to think actually, I could be wrong. Did Ratluck actually win as the number two seed? Does anybody remember when Ratluck beat Deathlock? We'd have to go back and double check. See if there's anywhere you can find it on the website. No, when Ratluck won in, two, in uh, 2015. Because wasn't that year, wasn't Deathlock number one? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So my bad. So one, two, three, and seven. Wow. Well, obviously the higher up you go, you know. Yeah. So well, obviously statistically, you know. And who knows? As of right now, we'll see if you know that could be the case. Hybrid Maniac is making uh, his expected, or is expected to make his return to the BFG after a two-year hiatus from it. So that will be. Very interesting. Hybrid was a finalist in the Battle for Glory All-Stars tournament before. Finalist in the 2014 BFG to Brutality and Root to Brew's third consecutive Battle for Glory All-Stars tournament win. Hostile, the defending champion. Remember last year's defending champion, Ratlock, was eliminated in the opening round by number 16 seed DZ. DZ became the first and only 16 seed to advance into the second round. Of course, it was some shenanigans. No shenanigans will potentially be possible this year. When you look at it, could see a lot of new faces in the BFG this year. Untamed Legend, Headshot Killer, Nexus Genesis, Master B, possibly some other late bloomers, ASP, EBAMs, guys that are still gonna try and See if they can fight there. Actually, isn't Ebams like comfortably in it? I think Ebams has a. And you do have guys. James, James, did you make the BFG before? Oh, you did? Oh, you were. So, wait, what were you? 15 seed then? Damn. I feel like though, like after Mania though, I, I feel like everybody now is getting more excited for BFG, like it's that time of year. He's just, he actually just texted me today about showing up more rebounds did, but then uh, I told him I was, cause he's like, I want to show up more if I'm getting a push for the world title. And I was like, well, you should be here no matter what. And he said, well, fuck you. <laughs> so, I know. Mm. He said, well, fuck you. I think I'm about to pull up my internet and get a little bit of a projected BFG outlook here. I mean, there is still a few weeks. And like I said, you can definitely see some seat changes. 
And of course in this matchup between Tripod and MBC, a BFG 2016 rematch, no submission allowed. Now I should mention since that BFG matchup, Tripod has been outlandishly obliterated by NBC on a number of occasions and in no way stands a threat to anything in this league. That was wrong of me to say. I apologize. Tripod looking to steal the show. Stealing your girl, just kidding. <laughs> I love how, I do really love how DZ was able to do these like T scores and stuff though. Like I find it very impressive. When's the last, does it say when it was last updated? Oh, okay. That's awesome. It's funny how high some of these names are, but like you have to take them out. Oh, wait a minute. So DZ technically would be in right now based on this. Oh, my goodness. Actually, DZ would be in by a decent amount of points. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a decent gap here between some of these guys. You can take a look at some dudes trying to make their way back in, but. So as of right now, it would be DZ at 15, Tripod at 16, and just and just uh, just under actually, just under two points behind Tripod is James Arcoffel. So even something like tonight, you say if Tripod loses to NBC and James gets a win, I mean, what that could do for Tripod or for James? Then right behind James is after James, you get a bit of a drop off between Prof and ASP. Prof and ASP after that. James, I'll give you a one-on-one -on -one tonight then. If I can. If I can figure it out. Savage, who are you in Superstar? Murphy? James, who are you? Orton? Okay, Savage, it's up to you. Would you want to fight James even though he's Randy Orton? Triple threat. Two. Oh. Mm. We'll figure it out. Now, like I was saying, though, um, still a lot of potential change here, uh, and, and especially as far as who's getting in and who's not getting in. But take a look at if you go down a little bit, too, in the BFG. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, and 11. You look at Midnight, Headshot, and Pepsi Killer in spots 9, 10, and 11 are all separated by less than one entire point from 78.85 points to 79.55 points. So by .7, three spots, 9, 10, and 11 could all be shifting. Yeah, but Aaron is not included in that. Mm -mm. Midnight Headshot and Pepsi. So those are three big names. And you take a look at Greedy, who would be lined up to fight whoever that nine seed is. That's a tough spot for Greedy. You probably, you have to figure out who you want of those three. You would be 9, 10, 11. You're 13 on team. You're ahead of Master B.
Uh, well, you just you keep the way it matches up this year is we're going back to the old format. So one fight 16, two fights 15, three fights 14, four fights 13, five fights 12, six fights 11. So right now you're at six, you'd fight 11. So seven, eight, nine, ten. So right now, Jumper, you would fight Pepsi Killer. AKA you'd lose. Are you really? Oh yeah, you are. Oh, you're close. Ratlock's got to show up more. Looks like Nexus has a pretty comfy cushion to get in the top four in what would be his BFG debut. NBC Master with another explosive F5. One, two, and Tripod loses. So now James will have an opportunity to maybe leapfrog Tripod. And NBC Master, the overall BFG point leader, continues. All right, let's see here. We got some, we got some points that we can give up. All right, let's let's have a one on one. Actually, Rook, I'm gonna have to get you a multi man at some point here, or try and figure something out. Let's try and get a one on one. Let's talk about the BFG a little bit more, and get a one on one between a guy who's looking to get points to get right in in James Arcoffel, and a guy who we just mentioned is a part of that nine, ten, eleven seed shift that could see a lot of change in headshot kill us. So let's do it. Randy Orton and Sting, James and headshot. Sure, ASP. <laughs> ASP is also out of there for, for a good amount of points. He could really use a big win. A couple of wins. Mm -mm. All right, the match is up. James Headshot and ASP watching. Now, if Hostel were to lose his title this Saturday, Nexus, you depending, you could potentially jump Hostel for third. Like, depending on how much, like, points continue to accumulate for you. Wait. Uh, what are you, 14? 13? You'd play 4. You'd play Nexus. If you're 13, you'd play Nexus. So... I think ASP might be too far out, though, because if you look at ASP right now, Tripod at 16, ASP is 15 points behind, or I'm sorry, 17 points behind Tripod, um, and there's only X amount of time left, so I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, even if you want a mid-card title, it would be like a huge help. You get, you definitely would jump Ebams because you're behind Ebams by literally less than a point. So you would definitely get the leap on Ebams and then uh, jumpers in front of you. But the difficult part with that is, even though you'll be earning more points than jumper, jumper will also be earning points for his U.S. title reign days. So like, that's kind of the the double edged sword of that. It, it would be close. It would definitely be a close race. So. What? Uh, it's it's tough to say. I know, I know if it's going to be a... I don't know, man. I... Yeah, but that's hard to call, man. Like, just striking. Like, you're... I don't, nah, I, the thing is, dude, that's, I, you can't call somebody, you can't, it would be, it's, you can't, you can't call somebody for striking, because then, 
Because what if they're grappling then nonstop? You call them for grappling? You know, like, it's just it's just a nonsensical call. All right, here we go, guys. Ding, ding, ding. All right, well, James R. Koffel knows he would still like to make the BFG. It would be back-to-back -back times. Back-to-back -back BFG appearances for James. Now, headshot, he's a little bit more comfortably slotted, but his seating and his positioning in that seat could change. These two both battling for big points and a guy like Tripod watching this matchup because Tripod knows he's on the inside barely and James is chasing Tripod in those BFG standings for just three and a half weeks to go. We may have you two fight for a wild card spot. That'd be interesting. I've been thinking about that. Like actually like for some of the people towards the bottom, I've been thinking about doing like wild card matches. You know, be something different, so. Uh, that's not a terrible idea. I would consider it, but it's also two weeks away from the BFG, so I'm not, I'm not 100% sure about that. But we could always like prelude with like some big matchups. But um, I'd have to see. So, also after Vengeance, don't forget, guys. Saturday, April 29th, when the BFG begins, is also EIF X5, the return of X events, for the first time in a while. I think our last X event was in January, so. And somebody has to do that to piss me off. Anyway, James with the running Luthez on to Headshot. Headshot will have a big opportunity to gain some points when he competes with Jumper Magnum for the United States Championship at Vengeance. That is a huge opportunity. Headshot could gain a ton of points for a couple of weeks there. In fact, Headshot wouldn't have to make a U.S. tile defense until the week of. Headshot actually might not even have to make a defense until after the BFG seeds uh, are decided so he could get a ton of days uh, well maybe not a ton of days but seven to maybe even ten days on his reign be a big opportunity for him James brought to his feet right hand to the head and James who we talked about trying to get in the BFG while well, you look at the momentum bar James not looking too good right now as we have passed the midway point in our show glad you could join us here tonight on Superstardom episode 331 the April 5th edition of Superstardom Near the ribs, couple of right hands, trio of right hands, elbow to the face. And an atomic drop connects. Now hands wrapped around the jaw of James Arcoffel in need of a serious comeback is James. And a lot of people have been a lot of people have been criticizing Headshot lately about his uh, inability to just finish out some of the matches that he's been in, but you have to think about it, and realistically, when you're when you're assessing that, I mean, you have to remember just how you know how good the mid card must have been. I mean, you look at Jumper Magnum; a lot of people criticizing Headshot not able to get the job done against Jumper, but at the same time, you know, Jumper could be a mid card champion with main event skill um, and that and that's definitely a big thing what are you guys talking about oh never mind yell the turf <laughs> yeah yeah I think uh, I think September 10th when 18 comes out At what? I would love to come to play floor hockey with you kids. I would just, I'd hit the puck so hard I'd hurt the goalie. I got a, I got a goal and an assist in our game the other night. Oh, you got a major penalty for a slap shot? And a lot of lag, and James, unfortunately, is being taken advantage of. Headshot thanks him very much. Scorpion death drop, and now Headshot just waiting, hoping he can get one more lag spike in. One, two, James gets the shoulder up. After back-to-back -back matches ending early on finishers, James trying not to have that trend reoccur. 
Elbow dropped on his back twice. Fists to the face. Oh my god, dude. I like, I'm not gonna lie. I lo oh, it's Scorpio Death Drop, and James Arcoffel is saying, I really want to get in the BFG, but I'm too fucking shitty at this game. Two, another loss for James Arcoffel. And Headshot getting a win. He's currently seated at 10. Maybe Headshot thinking the Elite Eight? We'll see. Okay. Yeah, no, like, um, honestly, for me, I, I really do hate WWE, um, but I went on W, like, I went on their YouTube just to watch that, and it just got me hyped up, like, even though I'm probably not gonna watch, just, it just got me so hyped seeing the crowd, it reminded me of, like, TakeOver Brooklyn when I was there, it was awesome. All right, guys, well, we've had a lot of one-on-ones, and I still think we have at least one more coming in our main event. So for that reason, we've got to get a multi-man going here somehow, some way. The question is how, because we have, well, Rook is in here. We can, we can get people. B-ball Romans. Who's Romans? Is he really? That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, Nexus, get Romans in here. It was awful. Uh... Tino, we're going to get you a match, bruh. We know that you need it. And we are. It was a good match. I hope you're not, like, joking. Because it was a good match. You definitely didn't watch it, did you? That, that was one of the best matches of the night. Eighty yards. What was the worst match of the night? I would say Andre the Giant Memorial. I Taker and Reigns. Anybody gonna say Taker and Reigns? <laughs> hey, who's Evil Legacy? He's not, but I'm going to invite him into the party because I feel like he's in EIF. Cool, he can have a match. We can have, we can have a Hellocity match here. We could have Deltino, Rook, and some other dude from Hellocity. What about Gianni Savino? See, this is our issue with these guys. We need these guys to know there's a party you can join. There he is. 
Oh my goodness. It's a Helocity match. Tyron, we need you, dude. You already had enough, dude. You got WrestleMania, SmackDown, Raw. You're tired. Okay. Tyron, why are you like, oh God, dude, you are a Helocity superstar now, okay? You're not good, and we're trying to make you good again. Well, here's the thing, though, Tyron. It's on the show Superstardom right now, but you're doing the Helocity. It's with Superstardom characters, but you're fighting Helocity, guys. It's you versus Deltino versus Rook, Murphy, Carl Anderson, and Dash Wilder. Three NXT tag teams. Well, the club. Not really. But. And this will probably be our pre-main event. And uh, Savage. It's uh, Anderson, Wilder, and some other dude. Uh, Murphy. Pretty good. Pretty good, actually. So. No, you're not. You're just bad. But anyway, all right. <laughs> All right, get ready, guys. Quick, Nexus, find something in EIF that you want for a lot of money. All right, I made the match. The match is up. Go ahead and look for it. This is Deltino, Tyron Hunt, and Rook. I don't care what you do. What? All right, we are waiting on Tyron. Join, dude. Get off of TV, man. You've watched, Do you do anything in life? <laughs> if I keep watching Taker, it's like it wasn't his last. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then that kid. <laughs> I like hearing it. It's the Hello Kitty Titty Show.
Oh, rumor, Undertaker returning at payback. Yay! Who did? Oh, yeah, he did. Such, seriously, dude, you could get over any IF of that. That would be good. Dude, it no, no joke, man. It would really work. I'm not kidding. You would probably... I don't know, dude. I, I think it would be good. Yeah, no joke, dude. Hybrid would help you out. You can get over it. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, that did. Untamed, if you don't stop, I'm going to send you a greedy Snapchat stories. All right. Oh! Oh my gosh, it's over. Tyron's not gonna get over there. Look at Tyron, he was gonna run right over it.
Oh. That's not so long. It was a good attempt to call. Well, before he pinned you, that doesn't matter. I love him a little bit. <laughs> oh my god. What? Hold on.
starts. No, I'm trying to watch some information. No, you can't. You cannot do that. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Giving me ten or forty dollars? Yay! <laughs> what jumper? I don't even think she's alive. <laughs> Sorry, I was just. I was using this match to make sure I could gain some information. Oh my god, Tyron Hunt's about to do the unthinkable. Oh my god. Is this going to happen here? Will Superstar to be a night to remember? No, it will not. Tyron almost won a match. But no. Tyron is nowhere near the top 16. I was going to say, I think Tyron's... I, looking at it right now, I'm, it looks like Tyron's around like 30. So. Well, realistically, when there's only like 28 people that compete regularly, it is. Oh my god! Deltino actually is like, Deltino's like 22. Gunstar! Oh, Tyron used Ring Escape. One, two. Oh my god, Tyron missed and Deltino won. Oh man. Tyron missed the pin breakup. No, you relied on the wrong guy. Deltino gets a big win. Maybe Deltino's the number one contender to the Hellocity title. A good match there in Deltino getting a win if the Hellocity GMs of Powers that be in Ralic and Hybrid are looking for Deadly Gamer's number one contender. They may have just found him, and it could be Deltino. Coming up next, however, this is Superstardom, and it is our main event of the evening. Pursuit ASP going one-on-one -on -one with the Superstardom champion, Nexus Genesis. ASP is on the outside looking in as well for the BFG. A win over the Superstardom champion could give him some consideration, not just for a BFG, G spot, but perhaps another crack at the world championship. Main event up next here on Superstardom.
Yeah, technically Greedy Nexus can overwrite you for this one because... And he just did. Yep. It did not come out. We all know Kurt Angle is going to be the big. Oh, awful, awful feeling. You're gonna have to. Looks like you're gonna have to get a shower after and just use your hand for now. <laughs> that or do <yeah>. just sorry. <laughs> Well, this is our sixth match of the evening, so before we get set, I'd just like to thank everybody for allowing me to get back into the booth. I know I took off that triple threat, but I always do. So, anyway, though, it's been fun. We've had some decent matchups here tonight, hoping that our main event is a good one as well. This is a match featuring two people that are not big fans of each other. ASP and Nexus Genesis have not been friendly. In fact, Pursuit is the reason why Nexus has gotten his account banned on several different occasions from communications here on Xbox. And of course, WrestleMania had some conflict between these two as well. So now Nexus will get a chance to take it out on ASP when it counts. Then following that, when he tells ASP, fuck yeah, through a text, ASP will get him suspended again. Here we go. Ding, ding, ding. ASP still awaiting an opponent for him at Vengeance, if he can find one. A big knee to the face, though, as... This is a WrestleMania rematch from, e from WWE WrestleMania with Seth Rollins and Triple H. We saw these two also as two-fourths of our WrestleMania main event. They were runner-ups in that for EIF. And the, they took place in the first Superstorm title match. That was the headline at EIF WrestleMania. A great matchup. Unforgettable night. Yeah, we'll probably... Ultimately, I'd say the, the culminations of WrestleMania 10 were probably among some of the best we've seen in any IF WrestleMania, those endings. And oh, hung up on the middle row, painfully, I might add. Greedy will have an opportunity to get some vengeance for WrestleMania for him as he looks to gain a championship. DDT connecting for Pursuit ASP. Again, this is a non-title main event, but Pursuit ASP knows that he needs to get back into it. You know, since WrestleMania, ASP has been in a bit of a funk. It's been kind of hard for him to shake off. He did get a win over Midnight Mayfire last week on Superstardom, but that's got to be the start that ASP has to move forward with. And a win tonight, if ASP is to get it over the Superstardom champion, that will just ooze confidence for this guy. As a rookie superstar, has a chance. And, you know, some guys are thinking BFG, and it's okay if ASP is thinking that. ASP is going to be a long shot at this point trying to make up the point gap to get into the Sweet 16. But that being said, still looks like this guy has potential. And BFG may be an important factor in EIF, but those world championships are year-round commodities, and ASP wants to get one step closer to that. But Nexus Genesis looking to prove that it is his yard now. That's right, big dog Roman. Uh, a little bit of lag spikes. Dead. The dead man is dead. And now... <laughs> Back suplex connecting for ASP. That's exactly what he left her, the arena to go do. That's why he took the gloves off. That way he's just going to leave the fingerprints. Up on the back of the arm, and now 
Texas Genesis Irish whip. Reverse brought back into a neck breaker connects for Pursuit ASP. Both men out of reversals. They've been battling the one-off reversals in this match. And Nexus did find out earlier this evening that he will be in a Falls Count Anywhere matchup with Greedy at Vengeance. A Falls Count Anywhere, Seth Rollins versus The Undertaker. It'll be a very interesting matchup, to say the least. Big super kick. Stomp on the back, sunset flip connects, finisher in hand for Nexi Boy. Irish whip reversal, ASP brings him back, kick to the midsection from Nexus connects, sling blade to follow up with it. Nexus Genesis currently slotted the fourth seat in the BFG, so Nexus, safe to say Nexus knows he is going to be in the spring classic here in EIF. Uh, but it's a matter of maybe even getting to three and a one nothing finisher count just like that. Hard to tell if it was Move Thief or not because they both have it on their move set, but the pedigree nonetheless, and ASP prevents this match from ending early. Also known as the DZ. Clothesline connects for ASP and outside the ring goes Nexus. Speaking of DZ, he'll be running this week's ED. ED comes your way on Saturday, April the 8th. I will be in Philadelphia at that time, but that's okay. No, uh, Phillies. So, a leverage pin. Reverse. Or, I'm sorry, no, I thought it was going to be reverse. I don't know, but it's a cool monster thingy. I like it. Hey, shut up, dude. I am. Um, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought, like. I at first thought like there was some legitimacy because honestly their third baseman, Michael Franco, is like supposed to be pretty good. But just oh my god, dude. <laughs> Speaking of that, I gotta double check the Philly score right now. Cause they No! I think they're gonna lose. Uh they're down one nothing bottom of the seventh. No, they do not. I don't know. How the hell are they only getting one? They only have one hit. Yeah, that is true. The Reds are really bad. But, and the curb stomp makes it 2 nothing. Shoulders down. 2 no. ASP. Well, ASP is getting out of counts early. Tries to work that. And, oh, all over the face. And, oh, no, ASP went for a finisher. Nexus was down to one reversal, but he picked a good time to use it. No, they don't. Dodgers are really good. Oh. Don't forget, next week is the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, the Flyers aren't in it. But, nah, they're not. Yeah. Yeah, but they won't make it. It's like improbable if you look at the points. They're mathematically led away from being eliminated. Oh my god, that was hilarious. Five goals in like... No, the first quarter, you idiot. Yeah, NBC. The Flyers played the Islanders last week, and at the end of the first period, they were up 5 nothing. The 6-3 was the final, but still, it was crazy. Uh, 2 nothing. You trying to test me to see if I don't know you, fag? Whoops, didn't mean to say that on stream. Anyway, <laughs> both men out of reversals. <laughs> and it looks like it's going to be... No, it's not. Not going to be 3 nothing. Not yet. Oh, you better be careful. ASP has got to become ungroggy before Nexus can into this will be a free move. He's ungroggy. It's all good. And there it is. 3 nothing, Nexi boy. One, two, <laughs> and no, ASP. This time, Nexus a second closer to getting the pinfall done, but it did not happen. And now, ASP with whatever fight he has left in him, Spinebuster as he tries to drill the champion through the mat. 
Down in the finisher count, that doesn't mean he can't win. Nexus has been pinned off one finisher before. He was not in last week's world title match. <laughs> also known as COC. Cock. <laughs> no. Oh, what will Nexus do? What will ASP do? ASP is standing still. ASP. Oh, and he went for the pedigree, and Nexus is not going to reverse. 3-1, the challenger looking to upset the champion in non-title action. Shoulders are down. One, two, no. Nexus right out. Well, you know, we talk about Nexus and, and how good he's just been. I mean, last week, he broke NBC Master down into a science. But tonight, this is the kind of stuff that you learn to find what Nexus is made of because this is where the consistency has to come in. And we've seen Nexus pinned off one finisher a couple of times, including WrestleMania. This is the kind of stuff, and these are the kind of nights Nexus needs to have on a consistent basis. And I'm going to tell you something right now for anybody out there, including Nexus, that's aspiring to win this Battle for Glory All-Stars tournament. That consistency is going to be the difference between the people that make it past the early rounds and the people that are in the final four, in the final two, and winning that tournament. So if Nexus can continue, he is going to be on to great things. He just has to nail that consistency. It's hard to do your rookie year in EIF. People forget about that. Nexus is just coming around the turns of his first full year in EIF. It's been a hell of a year for him, but there's still errors that he will have to correct along the way. He's doing good right now, though, up 3-1 finisher count in tonight's main event as his Irish whip is reversed on the apron he goes. ASP to bring him back into the ring with a suplex from the apron in. Back to his feet, but a reversal. And now an elbow to the top of the head from Nexus. Stomp on the ribs connect. And a forearm. Sunset flip. 3-1 finisher count, but he's got his fourth in possession. Arm drag reversal for Pursuit ASP, and ASP gets reversed, and a finisher will connect. Will it be the third time's the charm? Because for the third time, the curb stomp connects. 4-1 finisher count. ASP barely survived the last one. One, two, and he will not survive a fourth one. Nexus Genesis, the superstardom champion, successful in tonight's main event against Pursued ASP. I did say that. Yes, I did. Anyway... All right, well, on that note, Nexus Genesis, the champion with momentum, but as the champion has momentum, so does the challenger. Greedy and Nexus both picking up wins tonight, just a week and a half out from their world championship showdown at the 11th annual EIF Vengeance. And you can catch that pay-per-view live right here on the EIF Network, Friday the 14th. But before then, we've still got some ED shows, and we have one more superstar from next week, the Go Home SS show prior to vengeance. In the meantime, that's going to do it for our broadcast here tonight. Make sure you follow us right here on Twitch as well as using Twitter, using at EIF Network. You can subscribe to EIF's archive channel on YouTube. That again is EIF A-R-C-H-I-V-E and for any other inquiries, please roll over to the EIF website. You can see the BFG season records we've been talking about throughout tonight's broadcast, as well as the continuation of story progression to vengeance. Check out Superstar stats, bios, and more. Again, that is leaguelineup.com slash EIF lives. The URLs are all provided for you in our Twitch page here below. So, yes, I did come out of my early break to do a little bit of a show, and it was fun. I had a good time, and I hope you did too. Thanks for tuning in once again here to Superstardom on the EIF Network. DZ will be back with you this weekend for ED. For everyone here at Extreme International Fighting, I'm your host, Carney, saying good night, and we'll be back on air this weekend. I will see you all next week at Vengeance. Have a good night, everybody.